Eshan Rao. I am from IIT Tirupati. Uh, I am. This is my sixth live interaction session for data analytics and, uh, with Python. And today, what we are going to do is basically coding of linear regression, single variate, and multivariate. So we are going to see that how we can build that using Python. Uh, so we will we will code that in two different ways, possibly, most probably, and see what we can do. Uh, what I will do is I will start with basically of giving a simple intuition of what is uh, uh, linear regression is and followed by I will start coding in uh, in a Google collaboratory I will share the link of that as well similarly for uh, multiple uh, multiple multivariate regression linear regression as well so if this sound useful to you let's start uh, let me share the screen Okay. Okay. Uh, so basic uh, intuition of linear regression. Uh, we will talk about it. Maybe a uh, few minutes we will spend. I will this in this lecture. Uh, I'm not going to discuss anything with respect to mathematical. Uh, hoping that it's uh, since it has been covered a lot in the uh, in the lectures as well. So I mostly will focus on giving intuition, uh, followed by the uh, programming of the linear regression and multivariate. So for li linear regression, uh, the intuition is simple. Like give especially only for a single grid. That means I have a I have a variable. I have two type of variables basically dependent and independent. So uh, so mostly we will try to see that based on the independent variable can I uh, predict uh, the dependent variable or not. So for example I have a weight as independent variable. And I will have height. So what? Uh, so what we have to do based on certain data sample points that I might be having. I have to see. I have to see. Uh, I have to make us. I have to fit a line for this sample. Maybe like this. Maybe like this. Like this. And I have to see that for a given weight. Suppose I have a weight somewhere here. So I need to find what is what is will be my height. Okay, so in this case, this is my independent variable, and based on this, uh, and height will be dependent because it is depend uh, depending on on weight. Okay, so this is how uh, we will say, and mostly the linear regressions basically will say a fitting a line into data. So right now we will have data, and we have to if we have to make certain. Uh, sense out of it so this is one of the simplest uh, form where we are trying to see uh, assuming that they are uh, in especially in this cases for uh, basic case of linear regression that we have only two variables and somehow they are correlated to each other so we have to find out what is that correlation that correlation you be you we usually find uh, right in the terms of y is equal to intercept plus slope into dot x so assuming uh, so the basic assumption is that they are correlated and what we are trying to see that based on certain intercept intercept will be the starting point of a uh, value from the y axis it will be taken from y axis and slope will be a kind of line which represent the equation of how x is related to the y so based on this slope, uh, uh, we are to trying to find out for given x what is the value of y. Okay, so so here we are trying basically try to find these two values of intercept and slope. So this is another thing. Uh, another important fact is so we can fit n number of lines for a given data. So like I said, we can have 
a horizontal line, maybe a vertical line, or maybe a slant line, kind of like that. So we can have any type of it. so which line will fit us. So for that, there's something called a loss function, and that loss function is uh, least squares. So it just tells us that given I have some data points something like this and I, I've tried to fit a line so what I will try to see that from this data point particularly this what is the distance between the data point with the line similarly from this point what is the data point with the data point with this line similarly I will try to calculate for all the data points and then I will try to see I will try to sum all these distances with that line so wherever uh, for this line suppose I will get some 5.91 value certain assume that uh, sum of least square I am not writing the formula right now here so it's just that from this line uh, whatever distances I will have because uh, some x and y value so whatever data points I will have, I will square it, I will, summer, uh, I will make a summation out of it and I will get certain value. Now assume that I will again have a, so I can do that for n number of lines. So I can have a line of this angle, of this slope, maybe I can have of this slope, um, let me change, so of this slope. So I will try to calculate for multiple lines, maybe like this. Uh, in a downward direction so multiple lines I, ca I can see and based on that I have to see that which one will be uh, from which line will be fitting for most of the data points which le less least square that means with least amount of differences what we are having so that is what we are trying to find uh, that is using least square function now another important point uh, here is there is something called this if it's if a slope is going upward this is called as positive slope this is called as negative slope so if you have to take the in terms of height and weight sorry weight and height if I have this see if I have a positive slope means uh, I am assuming that if my weight is increasing my height is also increasing in negative slope I am assuming that if my weight is increasing then my height is decreasing so that's why it's called negative slope now uh, anything else so these are the general basic things of uh, linear regression basic intuition topics that uh, we are talking about as dependent independent variable uh, we have to basically it's all about this equation linear regression can be defined within this in, uh, equation that is y equal to intercept plus slope into x now what we are trying to do, we will try to code this thing in the Google Collab, uh, Collab book and we will try to see along with the SLOS function and we will try to see how it works for a real time data. So for a, for a, uh, for a data set. Once we have this, then for, after uh, once we do a simple basic linear regression, uh, linear regression then we will talk about something called as gradient descent as intuition. Mm -hmm. and and multivariate. We will talk about these two topics before uh, multivariate linear regression. So we will talk about these two topics before jumping to write a code for this as well, which is not quite different, uh, which is not that different, but in terms of coding, we I am showing a different way. Okay. So here I am assuming that uh, you might have a little bit of mathematical background or the scene of how the linear uh, regression works here so I am not going to uh, derive anything right now I am just directly go to the uh, code and try, uh, we will try to see how, how we can uh, solve it that. Okay now that being said let, sh let me sh stop the sharing from here mm. and let me start sharing my own screen. Okay, now let me go to this. So I will uh, start with linear regression and I have put some formulas also for our reference 
uh, for the later part. So let me share this with you. So it's also uh, even though we are uh, looking at from statistical statistical point of view, even in machine learning, the first thing that you will usually learn is the linear regression. That is, mm -hmm. given a data how to predict certain uh, certain things, we may use linear regression as a f one of the first step. Okay, so let's start with the coding. Uh, and if you have any doubt with respect to the coding, please type down in the chat. Though so let's start with basic importing certain statements so uh, certain libraries so I will I'll, I need to use numpy I will use pandas and I will use matplotlib to show how the uh, final product output will look like matplotlib is five as PLT. Okay. Now, uh, so there's a data called uh, salary data that we are going to use. So let me open that as well. Let me share that with you as well. Okay, I will share the data while the time it's loading. Let's we'll start writing with I will just upload show the data how data will look also look like we'll show that. Mm. Let me upload it. So, what in this linear regression we are going to do is, uh, so we have a data. So the data it talks about based on the salary that we, uh, based on experience, what is uh, what is our salary. So that is something we are going to find out right now using li linear linear uh, regression that is using statistical methods and we can predict also certain things now the data CSV. CSV. i will share this data with you in few minutes so i have only two variables here i will just show you that's better. Okay, so this is like uh, for data, we have two columns basically years experience and salary. So, for a given uh, uh, years, like particular one point one year, one month, one point one year, five months, something like that, and salary is given in terms of dollar, uh, like in terms of annual salary that we are having. So this data we are having. Now what we are doing is uh, we are taking X as year experience and Y as salary. So what we do is given a year of experience that an employee has, we have to estimate what it will be their salary. So that will be the linear regression problem we will going to have. So let's write it down. Um, so I'll just take years experience and why will we data 
salary okay so i have loaded this data okay so we will do this uh, before that let me share You can also do it side by side because uh, since I'm tapping, so it may take a little bit time. So you can also do side by side. So this is salary dot data, something you can download and upload in the Google Collaboratory. Uh, okay, so for a given uh, for given linear uh, regression, we will have a linear de dependent variable, which in this case will be salary. Okay, we will have some constant or uh, intercept from where the line will start that is uh, intercept will be will usually taken from the y-axis and then the something called slope or coefficient that we are going to identify using a uh, certain formula that we will, I will show you and then followed by independent variable that is xi xi here in this case will be years experience okay now to do that we uh, to find uh, here in this beta 1 beta 2 that uh, we had taken we can say b1 b2 it can be uh, accessed using this formulas so b1 is uh, beta1 is basically the slope that we are ha having that we are summation of all the data points with the mean uh, the, um, subtracting mean for both x and y axis and uh, divided by uh, uh, basically uh, the uh, data points of x uh, minus mean into square so this formulas we are going to see and we, that is something we are going to write right now in the function so let's define that let me pick it up okay so for this three we are going to define for these three uh, functions that is mathematically derived for linear regression so for that what we're going to do we are going to write a definition a function for linear regression so let me start writing the linear regression and I'm going to pass X and Y value. So I'm just writing a definition of linear regression. How are we going to use that we will see. Uh, so whatever I'm going to write is basically the same version of, uh, of this equation that you can see on the screen right now. Okay. So let me write N is equal to len of X. Uh, X mean is equal to x dot mean so I'm directly and we are using functions to find the uh, mean values of uh, salary experience uh, say salary uh, data and the year experience so y dot mean using mean function we can directly find that we are storing that in x uh, underscore mean and y underscore mean now first thing is we have to find b1 that is we are trying to find the slope in this case here is beta 1 so what we can do is we are we are going what we are going to do we are dividing to solve this thing what we, we will separately calculate the numerator and we will divide uh, and separate cal calculate denominator and then we will divide it the value so to do that we will say like b1 num that is num is equal to numerator and we will try to replicate whatever it's written here that is summation of from i equal to n xi minus x bar y i minus y bar so to do that uh, we will write like x into sorry, x minus x mean that we have calculated just before uh, into y minus y mean and cumulatively we are taking a sum of them okay so this is one and b1 denominator denominator is x minus x mean 
<coughs> to square into summation. So, so we had uh, the denominator has been like x minus x bar whole square, uh, the summation of those uh, of this bar of this uh, expression. So we have de separately defined the b one numerator and denominator, and to find b one, which is the slope here, uh, we will just do that b1 num divided by b1 denominator so we just write calculating slope so this is one thing and to find b0 that is b0 will be our intercept so according if we so find b0 what what we are doing is we are just uh, the intercept we had uh, subtracting the uh, by mean of y into um, subtracting the mean of uh, salary in this case y bar minus slope into x bar so in this case we can write it as y mean b1 into okay, let's put the bracket x mean so if we get this, we will get b1 and b2 value. And to just to get uh, the line into this form, we will just return this value as well. So we will pass a string. If this is for just for uh, representation purpose. We are not actually calculating anything here. And format b0. Round B zero and two and round. So what round is function is like we might get certain value in decimal points. So we are just rounding them to the two decimal places. So whatever whatever the value of B zero will be there, we uh, we will just rounding to the two decimal places. Same for B one as well. So once we get the b1, b0 and uh, regular line uh, expression, we will just return these three values. So it will be like b0, b1 and regular. Okay. So this is the function that we have defined just right now for linear regression because that is something we can define directly from here. So we are uh, finding the slope, we are finding the uh, intercept. Based on that, uh, well, once we find the intercept and this, we can find the uh, this expression. We can find this value and uh, of this equation that we can see on the screen y i equal to b naught into b one x i, and whatever value we put on x i, we can get the value of y, this corresponding y. That is that means we can predict it. So let's run this also. Okay, now that is one thing that we are, uh, we will use this function as well. So we will see how we will do that. Now the next question is, uh, so how how well we can tell that that uh, the regression line fits? So we have to find cert we should have certain value which tells us that that the whatever the slope that we are having, how well it is well it fits. Uh, to the data points that we are having. So for that we have something called as ask our value. So that is something we are going to calculate now. So how will the regression line fits for a uh, for the given sample data? So for do this uh, for doing this we will define we will try to do try to find this expression. So to find R square value, we just have to find R and then we can square it. So for this, this equation is provided. So what we're going to do, basically we're going to write the same expression in our, uh, in a function. So we say correlation coefficient and we'll pass X and Y. So in this, let's write um, Linux and 
I will just again to solve R, we will just divide numerator, we will solve separately numerator and we will separately solve denominator. So we'll, num is basically numerator, let me write as numerator and this I will write it down as n into x into y dot sum summation of x into y subtracting it with x dot sum summation of x into y dot sum okay that's our numerator and denominator will be like np dot square root we are taking the square root directly inside square root we will try to find n into x into 2 that is x raised to 2 and we will take sum of that once we have this then we will do minus we are going to have summation of x square so for this x dot sum into into 2 and into so we have done first part and then we have to see second part that is and this we will write it as n into y into 2 uh, dot sum minus y dot sum uh, y dot sum into square I think this should work out okay mm, I think this should work out okay so what we are done is for numerator not denominator However, it's written here that in terms of n into sigma of x y minus sigma of x sigma of y. Similarly, we wrote that thing in, in, in the programmatical form here. So once we find a numerator denominator, we just have to uh, write find the value of r. So in this will be numerator into denominator. Denominator. And then we just return r okay so this is a coefficient uh, correlation coefficient that we'll find to find uh, check that regression line at fit so if r is is equal here uh, is near to, to 1 we'll say that the the lines uh, almost perfectly fits the data point if it's uh, if it's uh, going to minus 1 it is sure it's negatively uh, it it has a negative correlation between uh, the x and y if it is zero it means that it has no correlation between x and y so we have since we are now we have defined almost everything that is we have find the uh, uh, linear regression and then we have found already uh, the correlation coefficient we have defined the functions now what we'll do we just uh, we're going to call them so let's this is considered as a mean function let let me write See the what is the function in linear regression? Linear regression, I will pass x and y value here. X and y value will be uh, from the data point that we have got here in the second cell that is x and y so, uh, year experience and salary. That so that is something we are going to find uh, pass it here and uh, in this linear regression function that we have defined from that we get three values uh, and let's print that value as well. So if we print. Regression line uh, 
black line you will have this and you can print also uh, intercept intercept is b0 then we uh, we are going to print all the values that is slope value also we will print it out and what is code now we have based on whatever value we are having so we have to find correlation coefficient so for that we had just defined the function we are going to pass x and y value in that and we are going to pass we are going to find for r value and r square is called as goodness uh, goodness of fit correlation coefficient pass it r and an r square which is uh, much better uh, terminology that is given for uh, finding that how well the line has been fitted for that we have we call as goodness of fit now if we just print this value that is so till now what we have done is so based on the three these three equation we have defined the linear regression as a function based on this r uh, r value we are finding the correlation uh, co uh, correlation coefficient to find that how regression line fits to the uh, given sample data so if we just try to print all the values calculating from this we will get certain values directly here so regression line uh, so the line of y equal to uh, b1 uh, b dot in uh, b naught plus b1 dot x will get something like this that is y equal to certain values that we have for slope is 499.96 regression uh, intercept is 25792 something okay so we got the value of intercept and slope and then based on that we are getting r square value as 95.69 something so it, it is equal to that uh, so the R square will we get the intu uh, as an intuition that 95% of the uh, for the 95% of sample of data the regression line fits well, but just by looking at this value you may not able to understand what is actually happening. So what we'll do we just plot uh, the regression line with the given data that we have. So let me write that thing also uh, as a code. So plotting the regression line. So I will just write it out figure so let me write this uh, a code for just to plotting the data how we can plot the data with this with the regression light that we have got right now so for that we're using matplotlib and now we are going to define we are defining what is the size of the figure would be and what is what will the values inside inside that uh, graph that we are defining right now line width is equal to 1 and h color is black now text is equal to so right now I am uh, defining text as the legends that we are going to put that in the graph so let me write that okay r that is coefficient correlation coefficient r cap 2 that is goodness goodness uh, of it of the regression line and what will be the regression line equation so x uh, okay so based on that we'll so wherever I'm putting the uh, the curly braces there what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to directly pass on the value in this in that sequential order so x dot mean so x dot mean will go for x mean equal to uh, the parenthesis that we are having for that we are going to have now 
I'm rounding this value to two. So whatever the value will you have, will uh, decimal values we're going to do with that two. And then let me down write this thumb. E. Then we have y mean. So let's write y. Y dot mean. Two. We are rounding the value with two, and then we are going to down the value of r. Similarly, round value of r square square r square, and then the intercept v not three and and finally b1 almost done we are just going to plot the values here okay now if we have this okay so we have found a we have defined the legends as well now only thing that we have to do is uh, plot this value so i'm just defining right now x axis and y axis and what are the legends would be what will the font size in this graph and so i'm telling the how the box color should look like you will see that what it looks like face color gray and followed by Alpha uh, zero point two, and we are adding certain paddings. It just these are some uh, standard values that you can try and test. I have tested these values, so it's it's just to uh, give a better look to whatever the graph that you're trying to plot here. So I'm just title of the graph like how experience. FX salary. This is the one for X label that is for X axis label. We are just defining that years of experience and the font size is 15. Now PLD dot Y label. This will be salary. Font size is 15. Okay, now everything we have defined. Now we just have to use the plot function uh, where we just have to write x. We have to plot the line that is b0 plus b1 into x. c is equal to r. Okay line now we are defining the line which you're going to plot there we line with 5 alpha is equal to 0 0.5 um, style now ok and we just going to scatter all the data points that we are having in this so x equal to x mean y equal to y dot p we are we are giving the average point uh, so we are just trying to give a marker like how it will be look like we just give a average value that we find in older statistics things x equal to 10 dot 5 is equal to r and this is average point okay okay almost i think i'm done with this let's try to run this as well okay so here we go we found certain things so 
okay so what we have done is in this plotting part is we have defined uh, the x-axis y-axis with their respective legends we have scattered all the data points and we will and the line that we have seen we calculated using earlier lean, linear regression function we are just plotting that line so based on that we, if you can see that uh, it covering almost most of the data points and with r square value we are saying that's 0 0.0.957 that is almost one that is line is very uh, is fitting properly uh, with the data uh, with the sample data point that we have so this is how you can do the linear uh, expression uh, linear regression uh, linear regression uh, using the code so for that usually uh, you need to remember these equations there is a much smaller method as well which we can do I will show you that as well uh, but before that I will try to show the prediction basically uh, before then after that I will see if someone has any question so I'll, what I will do is Okay, so if I have this and then I just have to do predict. Did I write the predict function? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, did I write predict function? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, we will do this later then. I will. First, directly first go to the uh, question, someone has question. Based on that, I will show you the six line code, which you can quickly try to do that. And uh, we can directly use the linear regression directly in that, rather than writing all this function. Okay, can you zoom the writing? Oh, I'm so sorry, I haven't seen that, I forgot. I will do that. And I have doubt in free week five and week six assignment, one question. Which uh, so Monish we can do that at the end of the session so once I am done with the coding of linear regression multivariate linear regression okay uh, what I can do rather than zooming right now I will again share this uh, uh, notebook with you just make a copy of that right now for the next time uh, Okay, I can't send the code in the chat box. We just make a copy of this because it's a different cell. It's not like I can copy everything in a single one. Okay, so okay, so just I will write another function, small function. How to? So we have write multiple function with lot of mathematics uh, equation involved here. If you want to skip all this stuff and directly use this, so this uh, using sklearn library you can do that. So. Let me write a uh, six, basically six to seven line of code. So I will just write that linear regression also. Linear regression function from library. Scale and library. Okay, so I just have to use sklearn, sklearn dot linear model import linear regression. Okay, and what I will do, I will just take read the CSV data, read CSV and salary data dot csv so i just have to keep an x and y into a proper uh, vector format so for that i will use ilog functionality so where i will just take the zeroth column value values dot reshape function to take the only the one column value similarly for y uh, that is a salary thing you will just take data dot dialog and here we will take 0 
to 1 and values dot reshape minus 1 1 okay so once we have this uh, okay I think I should have okay so once we have this we just have to create an object of linear regressor that we can find using linear regression that we are having so we just have to call linear regression so we are just making an object called linear regressor for the linear regression function class we will show that how we can write that class as well and we do something called fit we call the function call fit and we'll just pass x and y so in fit function we will basically find the function that we wrote just right now for correlation coefficient and the linear regression we find in that fit function we'll find those equations and once it fits it will create a, uh, it will create a line automatically so what we have just have to do is these are called linear regression dot predict and if we just pass any x value it will provide the, y, uh, the prediction value for that and we can check that later in this so y red okay okay so whatever equation we have wrote it can be done using the, uh, using these three lines basically that is linear regressor we can, a linear regression is a kind of class from this we are creating an object called linear regressor and then from the linear regressor object we are calling a function called fit which basically write the uh, basically write this function these three functions in the background so it will automatically calculate every single thing and uh, it will provide a fit line uh, a line or uh, equation which you can use for predict function by providing s uh, x uh, any x value you will find the prediction of y value okay found that. okay some error is there okay so i think i have made mistake here somewhere minus 1 Okay, okay, I think I made a mistake here. No. Okay. Okay. Okay, so for uh, certain x value, it is predicting certain y value. Uh, so so what are the x value what y value that's something we are just, uh, i'm not consuming right now but like within this six line six seven line of code also you can complete the linear regression the, but the only reason of showing you this how we can write the mathematical expressions into the code and how we can utilize that code to find a linear regression line, like to create uh, to find a, a regression line which fits the given sample okay so i think might be a lot of coding right now uh, Please check out the code properly one more time. Take your time in this. Uh, if you want, you can play with it a with it little bit. Uh, so what we can do, we can take maybe a 10 minutes, uh, 10 minute break. So at seven, we will start with multivariate and gradient descent with this simple intuition. And follow that, we will try to code uh, quickly the lean, uh, linear regression model uh, for multiple variables for the equation where we have multiple independent variables okay so we are taking 10, uh, 10 minutes break so we will come at 7 uh, 7 o'clock so I had a query uh, yes uh, 
covariance divided by uh-huh. variance. Yeah, I think there the denominator would cut down, right? Yes. Yeah, you can do that directly as well. But for that, again, you have to find covariance and all. Like, yeah, obviously. But you can use number. I think number. Ah, uh, yeah, I can use all those stuff, but uh, I'm trying to avoid all those. Uh, I'm trying to use only basic functionalities right now. Uh, with this thing obviously you can use all those things but directly you can do that but i am um, assuming that you might know little bit background mathematically in this solving the this thing and without using covariance how you can find it so yes, i have one more query about the sum function okay now we are reporting the csv file mm-hmm. but uh, what if we have an excel file the sum still work or do we have to use a for loop or something uh that in that sum function also you're converting that into a data frame so in that data frame you're specifically uh, taking a vector a particular one vector so x is basically a vector so it's not actually working on excel file so from work, even though you take from excel file just convert that to a data frame and from there you can start manipulating so it's okay yeah. all right yeah thank you yeah so will you be solving anything on anova uh no uh this time i thought like from 3 weeks i was solving so i didn't solve uh so maybe if you want maybe next week i can do that solving because i haven't touched the coding part till now from last 3 4 weeks that's why i took to share this thing okay okay yeah. okay yeah Uh, yeah, Monish, you can ask me now the question. Sir, can you share my screen also? Okay, sir, sure. just a minute. Yeah, try now. Not showing to me. It's showing me I am not allowed to share the screen. Mm. Okay. Try now. Yeah. Still not able to. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks. Okay. Screen visible to you, sir. Ah, uh, yes, it is visible. Sir, this fourth one. What the question is, sir? Ah, uh, can you able to zoom a little bit? I can't see actually. It's not visible, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, regression analysis sales. Okay. Why in dollars and advertising resulted in the following equation? Uh-huh. Y equal to thirty thousand plus y x. Okay. They are asking which statement is correct for the top. Okay. Above given figure. Mhm. So it you is. You are not asking in dollars, right? No. Okay. So question. Okay. Increase of five dollars in advertising is associated with increase of five thousand in sales. Okay, increase in one dollar in advertisement is that is associated with five dollar sales. Increase in one dollar in advertisement is associated with increase of thirty five thousand in sales. Increase one dollar in advertisement is associated with an increase of five thousand in sales. 
okay so what is your doubt like how it the answer is d yeah why yeah. are they, they are saying in dollars sir why in dollars means sorry i didn't understand like because the question is in dollars right let me so, let you see the eighth question sir like eighth okay, question okay a little ha uh, yeah i can see now y equal to 80 plus 6.2x okay in this question based on above estimated resolution line right? if advertising is 10000 then, then the point estimate for sale they are specifically asking in dollars in dollars yes okay then in pt y equal to we get 700 sir for they are asking for dollars so we multiply into 100 we get the answer sir mhm but here above in fourth question they are not asking in dollars Really, not See, that is an inter- interpretation of the value because everything is dollars. That's why it is happening. Like, so what is saying that uh, X is something is advertisement, right? So it is like it's an interpretation that X, the, the amount of money I uh, expend on advertisement that is X, how much sales of my product will increase in Y. So that is an interpretation of that. It's not like they are asking specific value of of value of that. So even if I increase one dollar advertisement, a uh, dollar in advertisement, advertisement, it is increasing by five thousand sale. Sorry, but I am not still not able to understand what is your problem with the dollars. Why it can't be in units? Why can't? Like, uh, why? Thirty thousand is excess, sir. Correct. Thirty thousand. So thirty thousand actually you have to assume thirty thousand is thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Why equal to you assume that why equal to five x? Thirty thousand plus five x is thirty thousand is excess. Okay, 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 okay. So intercept. Okay, so consider it like this. Uh, intercept is uh, you're taking thirty five thousand as is like right. If x equal to one, y should become thirty five thousand. Sorry, thirty thirty thousand five hundred something like that. So you're asking why why is not thirty thousand something? Why it's we're considering that's five thousand five x in sales. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Now x equal to one, we get y equal to five. Hmm. Hmm. And they are asking in dollars means into thousand we get five. Okay. So, uh, in intercept when we talk about intercept is basically it is starting. It's it's not like we have a direct correlation that if I don't put anything on advertisement, I will not get anything in sales. Okay. So it it will be more like once I start advertisement, I might get more more kind of sales. So, but before that, I might get thirty thousand dollars as a uh, sales that I'm having. Okay. Now, for one dollar, you might saying that five thousand sale. Now, suppose that that X is not one dollars; it may be one lakh or two lakhs. So, I have like I'm spending two lakhs dollars there. In that comparison, thirty X thirty thousand is very much less. So that that at that point of time, the more high, x value will be increases, the thirty thousand will get decreased. So you mostly focus on the phi x value, that how with what uh, percentage of uh, x uh, it is increasing. So in this case, five thousand you say. Uh, no, not able to understand. Okay, okay. So consider it like this: it's it's more like a ratio. Like uh, for one dollar, it may not make sense, but increase the value of x like uh, lakhs and crores. At that point of time, thirty thousand intercept value is doesn't have an, any value, and says. If they just ask in dollars, means then we should assume that only we should provide the answer in dollars, right? Not in normal unit. Uh, no, nah, yeah, like the dollars is a unit here, so yeah, you should ask in that way only. Yeah. That which of the following is not a required assumption for the ANOVA? Uh, which question? Four, fifth, sixth, yeah. which one? Sir, the correct. Another doubt. The now take the tenth one. The tenth question. Anova procedure is statistical approach for determining whether or not. Anova definition is the mean of three or more. Okay, sir. Uh, mean of two or more population are equal or not? But we we use Anova only when there are three or more population. Three. How? Three. Why should we use ANOVA for two? We can use F test or subject test or anything, sir. 
only for the difference only okay 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 f test f test can be done f you are saying or t test you are saying sir uh, which test you are saying f or t t test z test t test so no 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 t test okay okay t z and t test is basically for i don't know the population size i have taken some set i have only one population in that i have taken one sample so that when you are saying z or t test kind of in those situations we have only one population in that we are taking multiple samples so that is a different gameplay altogether here we are, it's more like this like uh, if you want to t- uh, tell that uh, for a given election for a given state uh, who is going to come power you taking 100 or 200 people that is from one population uh, that is your whole state consists of one population in that 200 is a sample but if you want to say that within that particular region where it has five or six states then you have five to six different population okay. so there you might have multiple more multiple samples as well i think um, according to my understanding of anova is mostly for more than one population when you're dealing with and they might be related they might be unrelated as well the sad presenter You keep it also. If you want to compare more than two population only, we should use Anova. Ah, uh, then I have to more check. More than two means more than two means um, at the means of two or more populations are equal. It's not right. Hmm. Okay, I have to. I have to maybe I have to read that or I have to check the internet like how it should be. So it's ah uh, according to what. i understood that we have two different populations at that point of time uh, we are trying to see that how they are either they are related or how they can give a certain uh, from option will be right based on because uh, anova is only considered based on population so that the three option samples are given so that we consider the first one mm-hmm. even the population is given we consider only three or more mm Okay. Okay. Because Anova is mostly used, mostly not. Anova is only used to uh, use when three or more comparing three or more means. Have you checked the internet or somewhere else? Like uh, I have to check that. Okay. The one example which I read about Anova at that time, I don't know from some lecture or somewhere else. It is like if I have uh, if I am taking a clinical trial, uh, so I will have two experimental groups. Okay, so these are only two ex- independent experimental groups. So where I will give a, a placebo uh, medicine and I will give actual medicine, and then I will try to see that which is more effective, like uh, whether the medicine is actual effective or placebo effect is there. So in those cases, ANOVA has been used, as far as I can re- recollect right now. Uh, but I would suggest that, uh, or maybe after this session, we can search on the net like about what people are saying. Based on that, I can explain one more time. But according to me, the that answer should be correct. Okay, then we'll see. Now come for the fourth question. Ah, uh, can we do after this session? Ah, uh, like I have only one hour, so maybe after this multivariate thing, I uh, we can discuss upon that. So this question only. Okay. 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 Now they are asking which is not a required assumption for Anova. Okay. For okay. oh, that, I need to check. Okay. Mm-hmm. We are saying population have equal means. It is the not the assumption. We are saying that it is not the assumption. Sir. Assumption is new, not new one. Right, okay. First option is random variable test. Each option has a normal probability distribution. I hope so. That is the equation, right? Yeah, yeah. The, two, the first two options are basically correct. Mhm. At least two population are under consideration. At least two population concentration, or based on that you are saying that has three, but we will check that. Our uh, population are equal means, like why e- why equal means? Like I can have two different population, I can have any means, right? So why it has to be equal means? Maybe I have two hypotheses, null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. Both are the assumption only we are taking null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. Correct sir? Huh? So. Then null hypothesis we will take that uh, population has equal means, and the uh, alternate hypothesis we take uh, population has not equal means. Then it is assumption. Okay, okay. Don't assume that the population has equal means has null hypothesis. Like that is based on purely based on quotient. Uh, we can't just take it as assumption that it is have must be there. 
that is it's it's based on context to context we can't assume that population has always equal means something like that that's not that that's not a, a hmm hypothesis the both hypothesis null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis both but how that is related to anova uh, 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 as a assumption anova is as a technique and what you are saying null hypothesis that's based on specific context how you can take that specific context as a uh, for anova anova has not been de 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 decided based on the hypothesis of null and hap uh, this thing that it should be equal or not we are comparing why we comparing three or more population we take this only no uh, no, no 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 i think you are confusing those null hypothesis of specific context with the assumptions of what exactly we need for the variance of anova what uh, right now i don't remember the word, what is the exact formula of variance in anova based on that i can explain right right now please wait for it uh, after that we will see the what is the formula of variance in anova based on that we will see that how population have no equal mean doesn't make sense or why we should not have assumption for that and consider please consider that two three or more we can check down on internet like you can check right now like why you can't do that like that is not a uh, you have to think of much for you just check that because how much time it will take just check whether you need to on not but in the sad sad class <laughs> okay but are... why not check multiple sources what's wrong in that i just want to check that if everyone is say then we will see that what's the problem might be npt or can also be wrong but let's check the internet According to that only we can answer, right? Like being that. See, so everyone, yeah. people can make mistakes also, right? People can make mistakes also, so that's fine. We have to check. You have to check. If you have doubts, you have also check from multiple sources, different sources, what other people are saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry, uh, everyone. We will just start. Uh, the session uh, so we will just talk about the graded descent quickly and followed by we will start coding okay okay so graded descent is usually helpful uh to find to again it's a, it's a method of finding the fitting of line uh and for that we need to find optimal values so if so for even a unising univariate or uh uh if you have a two variables and we have to fit the line we can fit any of the lines right so we have multiple options here so it is is actually considered as one of the best ways uh to find uh or one of the optimal ways to find which line should will suit us better so how the intuition of goes like this what it does is it will uh let's say like it's height and weight like that okay so let's say it's line 1 line 2 line 3 line 4 something like that so we have uh so what we can do is we try to find multiple uh multiple lines with multiple intercepts it is here b0 b01 b02 b03 something like that and with certain slopes slope 1 slope 2 slope 3 slope 4 so we can try to fit multiple lines here uh, which people usually do that uh, for try to fit multiple lines to see that which one is better so how they can do that they just try to uh, uh whenever they try to fit a line they calculate the uh this uh the loss mean square or say mean square error there's a distance between the particular data point with that line so it will calculate for all the uh, all the data point for the particular line and you can find this thing but to find that exactly this uh this thing so what they usually do is they will try uh, what algorithm what try to do is it will try to generate multiple lines and it will try to plot 
system and I will just write it down here. Square residual. Okay, so suppose for line number one, uh, we have certain uh, sum of square residual and at, at particular uh, intercept value. So suppose phi in this intercept is 0, 1, 2, something like, and we have some square residual value. So ideally what happens is for any line that you're trying to fit, you try to plot that in this uh, line of intercept versus sum of square residual. So at intercept 0, a value of uh, sum will be something else. Then if you, the, the more you try to close towards intercept 1, that's y equal to 1, you try to find certain different values. So ideally what has been shown that, I'm, I'm just putting certain values. So for different number of lines, so maybe for 10, 12 lines, 10, 15 lines, uh, it is trying to find the intercept value and what is the sum of square residual, that is mean square error. They're trying to find that and they try to plot that. Okay. Now, the best fit line would be where in this, in this curve, if I try to take a derivative at any particular point, so at any particular point will be one line. So when we are saying that uh, a point we are defining here, it, it can be a one particular line in this in this scenario, in the right hand right hand scenario. Okay. So once we have this, we try to take a derivative of that. So once we try to take derivative of the uh, of the curve, that means once we get try to get derivative it means we are trying to find a slope of that curve. So if we are trying to find the slope of this curve, what we should aim for it, the slope should be equal to zero, almost equal to zero or equal to zero. That means somewhere here at some point of intercept here, I should find a value where the slope will be approx near to zero, this value. I need to find this value. So based on once I find this value, what I will find that? I will find the exact intercept value which will, which in this case might be 1.1 something based on what I have scored and I will find try to find the sum of square residue. Okay, so how gradient uh, so how gradient descent is actually optimizing all these steps. What it actually doing is, let me make a clean diagram. Square residue. So what it actually is doing is if I have a curve like this, something like that, it will start at certain value point. That is start with certain intercept, we will give a certain intercept value. So based on that, it will it be something called as learning step size and learning rate. So if we try to find uh, a particular uh, a particular value is try to find its derivative and based on that if the derivative is quite high or if it is positive it try to go towards downwards in this direction uh, uh, mathematically I'm not telling how it, it can be done uh, but usually mathematically you can prove that you can go using a particular step size and learning rate you can go down or if you take much bigger step you might jump from this side to this side of the curve uh, from left to right side of curve Okay, so based on step size and learning rate, you try to reduce the derivative of the slope that you have, uh, of the line that you're having till you find the value which is approx near to zero. If the slope uh, to, to zero, if you're able to do that, you will find the intercept value based on which you can start uh, solving the regression line, uh, the values of regression line, whatever we are, we are finding here. Okay. So once you find an intercept, based on that you can go above and you can find out, okay, for this intercept, I have this, this particular slope. So you can use that slope and then you can try to find a regression line, which fits the best, okay? And it do quite fast, it do quite fast. That's, that's the uh, intuition that we usually uh, found from gradient design algorithm as well. We will see that how we can uh, code it programmatically as well. So how it find the derivative of multiple of this particular curve and how it find the minimum particular uh, uh, slope in this gradient descent based on which we find intercept and based on intercept we'll find the so slope line uh, slope uh, slope of the particular regression fit line okay so this is gradient descent multi regression multi weighted regression is uh, just i will try to show you in in 
uh, in three uh, dimensional example so suppose i have i have a mouse who has a certain height and certain weight now i will try to see the size of the mouse i will add a third parameter here consider as 3d uh, the 3d space it will take tail length okay so if i have this uh, three uh, equations i will try to find the what is the mouse size so mine will be like mouse size or let's not take mouse size maybe let's take weight here weight plus intercept plus slope into height plus slope into tail length so i will try to see that for a given height and given tail length and with certain slope here slope will here in this case will be considered as plane here the slope will be considered as a hyperplane okay i can't visualize it right now but it will show like based on uh, here in a 2d plane we count as a line but in a 3d plane it will call as plane and if you take multiple variables like if you take 9 uh, 10 variables thing you have 9 will be independent and one you are making as 9 will be independent and one you are making dependent so based on this 10 uh, 9 independent value try to find one dependent value so for that you may find a different kind of plane okay so again in 3d plane if you if i have a mouse which has certain height and i have a certain tail length i have to find what is the weight of that particular mouse so what for that my equation would be in terms of weight into in, uh, will be like intercept a certain intercept uh, with particular slope intercept from the weight side and with particular slopes uh, which i can find through height and tail so once i try to combine the slopes of height and tail length i will find i will get a certain kind of plane which i will act uh, which i have to find that to uh, uh to assume, uh, to find out the weight of a particular mouse okay uh, so this is there and there certain other things that uh, in multivariate that is it's not much difference from this so usually you can find it is like p equal to ax where a is slope and b is uh, bias or intercept that we call as the only difference here would be like here the x will be feature 1 feature 2 feature 10 something like that similarly for m points you will have m 10 features so for you are mostly the for 10 like from m data points you might have 10 features okay that is one aspect so if you have 10 features you should ask that which feature should be given high priority for a particular dependent variable okay so what is uh, what we are going to have is like earlier we just have a slope and intercept so we don't have to find that okay which one is more important like that but when it comes to features if you have 10 features or maybe hundreds of features like that and you have multiple data points then you have to find a, that which feature like suppose i have a1 to a10 i mean give 50% of the weightage to feature 1 and 0.001 that is one percentage weightage to the tenth feature so i have to find that thing and we can find this weight value using the multivariate linear regression formula so when we say actually the slope and all that when you come to multivariate feature formula at that time you will see that you try to create a equation so it will be like b plus a1x a2x a3x something like that and we call usually call it slope but also considered in these these a1 a2 3 as features and with with uh, uh, with has been provided with certain weights weight weight as in in this case is the uh, the importance so if i am giving a particular feature as that as one that means the only that suppose a as one 
directly a1 as uh, one that means i am telling that for that particular feature a1 i am uh, it is directly co di directly related to the uh, a variable called y okay but i might have other features also which might be correlated so i need to find those values as well so for that i will create uh, if you have observed uh, uh, seen the derivation of multi uh, multivariate uh, linear regression you might find uh, a vector, you might start dealing with vector uh, vectors or 2D vectors or matrices where you will have weight vector, you might have feature vectors and then you combine them and lot of derivation have will happen. But it's just an extension of what we are having in linear regression where we do only dealing with two variables but here we are dealing with n number of variables. Uh, okay, okay, uh, uh, yeah, you can consider a I am just for explaining I am doing that don't consider it as a proper notation here I am here I am considering here as a particular weights of, of features so here x I am I am assuming that x are different features here and a1 a2 a3 are uh, the weights of those features right now okay mathematically I am not trying to uh, prove here anything but just assume that for, uh, if you have multiple features you have to assign certain weights to predict the certain value for the dependent variable. So you have to calculate those weight as well along with the loss function that you are having. So that's the overview of uh, intuition for uh, multivariate linear regression. What I will do, I will just quickly, uh, since I have 40 minutes of time, I try to quickly write the code here and we will see what we can, do, uh, we can do. It's not that much different from what we have done earlier, uh, but the way we're going to write the code may be a little different programmatically. So let me stop sharing the screen and let me again share the collab notebook. Okay, I think, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, I think you can see my screen. Okay, so I will directly in this collab notebook itself, I will write the multivariate linear regression. So, so I'm going to write this multivariate linear regression using the uh, concept of de uh, graded descent itself. So all this formula will be like this multivariate regression linear regression can be defined using y cap equal to w x plus b where w is the weights weights of the particular of all the features that you are having and x is not a particular variable it's just a, it's a matrix a matrix of features then we have msc that's minimum squared uh, squared error this is a loss function and this uh, this if the two formula that you're looking for it's it's basically a derivative function uh, for from the gradient descent aspect and we uh, w is basically for weights and b is called for bias bias basically in this case will be intercept okay so these are the uh, common question that we are having and we're going to uh, quickly try uh, try to program it out here so for that first let me import some libraries as np i already defined that earlier but just for Take I'm writing it here. Plt and from mat. Okay, right now this might be enough. Okay. Now after this, I will define a class called linear regression. So we're going to write uh, the linear regression uh, as a class basically. So if you know what is different with I hope you know between difference between class and functions. It's object or inter program that we are doing, or consider like the case that we have done earlier, few uh, few minutes back. We are just just using, we just calling the function. We done the linear regression. So just like that, we are defining the background. Uh, so I'm just typing out the. So it implements linear regression. 
bit rate in this side. Okay, so first thing is I am defining a constructor. So constructor is a function that uh, by default once the program starts a object of the class will be created and for that the first function which will run is the init function. In that we are taking something called as learning rate. Learning rate is used for calculating the graded descent that is step size that you are having and n iteration that is the number of times uh, the gradient descent has to uh, algorithm has to work to maximum number of time to achieve the optimal value of intercept and then we are defining certain values here uh, default values the self is the object uh, we are just telling so if you are saying self self is basically the uh, self-made object of the class linear regression so instead of defining any value uh, object name we just are calling it as a self and then we telling self dot an iteration so we giving some by default values here iteration then self dot bias here bias is the intercept we are talking about and weights is the weights of the features that we are going to calculate and self dot loss which we defining as a array okay so this is a constructor thing that we have created now second part is loss function squared error so here I will take y and y hat let's def let me define it uh, what it do so it is a method used to evaluate loss function uh, You will like evaluate loss at each iteration. So when we are saying each iteration, it is mostly uh, for the gradient descent that we are talking about. So we have array y, which is basically an array with two values that is taken directly taken from data set and y hat. We are telling an array of predicted values which is going to be predicted and we are returning a certain value which will say that what value we are going to return as float it will be a float variable ok now to do this let me define uh, uh, since we are trying to find the loss function basically loss function is finding the errors so for that if i in range Len y, length of the actual values that we are having and we are calling error plus equal to y of i minus y hat, y hat will be the predicted value that we are going to have. So how we are going to pass that we will, we will also talk about that and then we are just going to error divided by len of y so whatever the uh, summation of error we are having uh, we are dividing that with the population of or the sample size of the y so this is the mean square error that we are having right now uh, ok now we define the fit function here so fit function is basically where we are actually defining all the main uh, defining the main uh, linear regression model we just find we put all the equations that we have found in this thing so I will just put down as a comment used to calculate coefficient as well of the linear regression model so here x will be array 
which basically are features and y will be an array is basically true values that we are having and it is going to return now it's not returning any value of this function is not returning any value so in this there are certain steps are there um, so for that we just I'm writing now initialize weights and bias to zeros so we are going to find the weights for all the features as well so and the intercept as well so for that we are defining certain values weights in p dot zeros x dot shape mm, okay this happened one hmm. okay then we are defining the bias as also initializing the weights for that now we have to perform gradient descent here second is performing gradient descent so for that we will write a for loop here so in which we, we are calling the self dot it an iteration value that is we have taken as a 10,000 thing okay so in that we we'll first define the line equation so y hat will be that np dot x dot uh, x comma self dot weights plus self dot bias so we are uh, so it's this is the basically equation that we have saw uh, see y hat thing in this this thing y y hat is equal to weights into x that is the features that we are having plus the bias that we are having here in this case intercept so we are just defining that as it is and then we are finding the loss loss will be finding as self dot since we have already defined the function so let's call this self dot mean square error and we are passing the value of y and y hat we are passing this we are calling this values and then cell dot loss loss is the list that we are having uh, we define as a uh, list so we are define whatever the loss we are going to have that is from this function of mean square error we are going to pass that for uh, in that list we are storing that one by one okay yeah. now once we have this this is the first part for second part is we have to calculate the derivative derivative basically to tell that the slope uh, slope of the curve of gradient descent curve so we are going to find the slope for that so to do that it's basically we're going to write this functions uh, I don't know what called is like omega maybe not omega this derivative of w we are going to find uh, what is the formula 1 by n sigma of 2 xi y hat minus y and for the bias partial derivative of b we are going to find 1 by n sigma of 2 uh, y hat minus y so we are going to write this uh, equations here partial w and let me write 1 divided by x dot shape 0 so x dot shape 0 will give me the length basically and into into np dot x dot p I'm transposing x dot t is basically for trans uh, transpose function in the in the matrix and I am putting y hat minus y 
Okay, so this is for this partial derivative of weight function and then we are finding for bias as well. That is 1 by x dot shape into 2 into np dot sum y hat minus y. So this equation that we are seeing here is just basically that partial derivative that we are finding for this equation that I am hovering the markers around. So we are finding for this. So after having writing this, let's we have to update the coefficient. So update the coefficients. So updating coefficient will be like self dot weights equal to minus. So assuming that the weights will be high over the period of time. Uh, so while doing a gradient descent, we'll we go get down to slower, uh, lower and lower values, because as we go down, uh, the slope will become to zero as well as the values with respect to weights and bias also will uh, will will get down. So self dot Now learning rate will define the step size basically uh, to and it will give the value nearer to 0 because learning rate will be 0 0.01 in this case. Uh, so it will try to keep the values nearer to the slope 0. So that's why we are using a uh, learning rate here. It gives it fasten up the process. Okay, so now for gradient descent we have wrote the whole algorithm directly here. Now let's try to predict here. I think we must be done in this. Def predict self x. So basically, we try to uh, predict the values, uh, prediction values. For that, we are writing function. So makes prediction using the line equation. So it will be like x will be the array. We are just passing the features in this case. And the return value will be here. It is also an array with predicted set of values. Okay, so it just has only one line so it will be like return np dot x self weights self weights plus self dot bias okay so when we are saying predict function we are just having this y hat thing that we have defined here we are just defining this uh, this equation uh, uh, one more time so weights into x plus bias whatever values we have we are just predicting uh, for that for given x and it's predicting and it's returning that value okay so this is for class regression linear regression that we have defined so we have four functions here one is initial constructor which defined the basic uh, Variables that we are using that is a learning rate, iteration, the number of time, max number of time the gradient descent algorithm should be should be used. We have based then the next function we define is mean square that is to find loss function that's basically loss function. Then we find fit function where we are actually using the gradient descent model to find the weights and the bias, uh, uh, which can help us to find a proper, uh, which give us a proper uh, regression not line in this case maybe regression plane in this case and once we get these values we can predict start predicting that for a given x what is the value of y will be so let me write this run this thing and 
now instead of ro loading uh, a data set from uh, from system we can also we have some predefined multiple data sets are available so i have taken a load diabetes data set from sklearn if you want to learn more about data set you can directly go on the sklearn website and you can find these things so i am just directly loading that uh, for diabetes it will be downloaded uh, automatically automatically from the net so it's not like i have to upload a particular file for it so data dot data is basically it's the, all the features that uh, i'm going to keep and data dot target now if you want to see that uh, the raw form of uh, the data set we are having just me write text you will get a set of feature feature value for a particular thing so what are these features where uh, what are the name of this each column is something we can identify once you go for scale and data set and if you find search for load diabetes so then you can find the value of each and every value that you're having okay so so but for the demonstration purpose we are just importing our uh, data set from a, a predefined library and we're just passing the data and target value already now what we have to do is now we have to train our model so it's a kind of machine learning aspect will come into the picture where you can't just run grain decent just like that you have because you you might have to use multiple multiple uh, permutation combination uh, to select the best plane so in this case what we're going to do is we are going to def divide the data set into train and test model so for that i am going to use predefined test train split uh, functions and in this i am going to define x train and x test so the reason why we are uh, using this train and test model it's not needed but uh, it's just to basically understand that for we will train that uh, the data may be on 80% of the uh, data values that we are having and for rest of 20 we are putting the test and then we are going to match that whether the whatever the text value whatever predictive value of x test is nearer to y test or not mm, so let's pass all the values here test size is 0.2 test size 0.2 that means 20 percent and random state is is 42 uh, this is certain parameters that you can ignore also uh, so model will be we are directly calling the linear regression uh, model uh, the not model from the SKLN, basically the class that we are finding here, defining the linear regression class that we have defined here. We are calling that. And if we do model dot fit, we, because we already defined the fit function here, model dot fit will be extreme and y train and predict y train and predicted values would be model dot predict for x test okay uh, so if we try to do that and just if you try to print I did it work. So three were given. Okay. Somewhere it's wrong. It's happening. Mm, model dot fit. These got take two and but three were given. Model dot fit fit function. 
is self okay 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 so in that case i just need to write it as if i do this should work operand for model dot predict okay mm, predict let's go to predict function and x test has been given self creates this this Comes a problem of star row to none type. Mm -hmm. X test I have taken. X train, Y train, Y test is there. Mm. Okay. I think some fault is there in my code. Let me see what is the problem. Mm. Model dot predict X test. Mm. X that self creates. I have the variable called base is correct. Base is there, which is none none. Okay. Define okay partial t. Uh, okay, problem is here. Base is done. Hmm. Okay, I think I have some problem with my code. Mm -hmm. And considering we have time limit, I, what I will do, I will open a different notebook where I have already tried wrote this thing. Hmm. Okay, so I think I have some problem with the code and considering we have a time constraint, what I will do, I will show the where uh, I already coded this earlier. Um, let me connect this with the annotation, the results, okay. Okay, now just let me uh, quickly go through what we have done for multivariate linear regression. Uh, we define a class called linear regression in which we have four functions initialization, which is a constructor, these are mean square error. We have a fit function uh, which finds a gradient descent and we predict the values based on the uh, x, uh, based on the features that we are having. Okay, and based on that, we have uh, and we have loaded the diabetes data so we are going to train and test on uh, this data so how we have done this is we use a function called train test split in that we are dividing that uh, train data test data into 80 20 percent 80 percent will be training and 20 percent will be the uh, testing so x train will be like for the particular feature we have a particular y train uh, final value as a predicted value so in text test, we, what we'll give, given a particular feature, we will see that whether the pi test is almost equal, predictive value is equal to y test or not. So I will share this uh, notebooks also uh, along with the uh, video that we are going to have. Now, if you do, if you try to print predicted value. you might find multiple things so what we can do is predicted uh, value and okay i have to do for my range 
with x and y test. Print the cat value. Let's I and actual value as y test i if we try to run this okay i think i have to do a little bit more uh, problem with this here but uh, if i change this code i will change this uh, i will fix this code and then if i do this I will I can compare the what are the predicted value I having with actual values okay so that's what we should uh, we can find it multivariate integration I will fix that code but what I want to show is something different here more interesting part is uh, to find that how good actually uh, you know that with the loss function that you're having how good it is so for the for particular uh, green descent value you might find a particular you know, weights and particular uh, bias values and at that point on how to identify that which uh, which set of values are good for uh, good for the uh, fitting of the particular function so to do that we have plotted uh, this loss function loss per iteration okay so the observation of this is uh, if I start with uh, but so I will start what the loss function I'm trying to calculate is I will give certain set of uh, predefined feature weights of the particular features like weights to the features and certain bias so based on that I will find certain loss function based on that so I will find a certain kind of inflection point here where you can see in the uh, uh, where the star actual uh, around bit values between minus 25,000 to 20, minus 20,000 some inflection point will become uh, will be there based on which I based on after which my values will start uh, will not drastically uh, will not get reduced drastically it will be very small so we have to find this kind of iteration point we can find this iteration point based on the varying the value of learning rates that we are having so to, to do that learning rates uh, so what we have we wrote up we try to plot the uh, uh, so we wrote a code here so in which for a given learning rate that is different learning rates we are find a multivariate linear regression for the same uh, for low uh, diabetes data set and then we are trying to plot that in which iteration versus loss so after in 10,000 iteration uh, so uh, I might found that at maybe at 200 300 iteration found that my inflection point and then based on that I can stop uh, I can also stop my gradient descent algorithm as well for that I have to need to put certain other conditions so so what I uh, what we can do here is to find that learning which learning rate is important. Learning rate will tell you that how to uh, at what point of learning rate we can get the minimum almost basic uh, minimum uh, loss. And once we use that uh, learning rate, we can uh, find the appropriate weight for the features as well as the bias value. So in if you see we have plotted for. Uh, learning rate of 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 so if we try to plot for the uh, loss per iteration value for a particular learning rate we found that for learning rate equal to 0 0.5 uh, we found the least uh, least loss function uh, in the bottom and that too we have found around in the position of maybe around 300 400 iteration here or maybe 500 iteration value so after that we can put a certain condition where we can stop the procedure after uh, finding a certain threshold and once because after a certain point the values will be fixed throughout the iteration so there's no point of continuing the iteration all the time so we can put a certain condition and once the threshold has been reached we can stop and we can do the rest of the procedure okay so in short what we have done in multivariate premium regression is we will have a n number of set of features for that we have to find weights so we have multiple features and for, for each of that we have to find weights 
the weights will define uh, to, and to find a particular weights we have to use a concept called gradient descent uh, which can define the different weights for different features and plus the bias value so we have coded all these things and before that we have done for single variate linear regression we are just dealing with the two uh, we are dealing with only with two values uh, uh, a dependent variable and one independent variable and one dependent variable okay so that's what uh, the today session is all about basically for I will just share this notebook as well I will post that along with the YouTube video that I'm going to have so let me so today we are mostly deal with the implementations of linear regression and multivariate regression. For that you should have a certain background of mathematically either what functions and what loss functions and what other features that we use upon. Based on that if you know the formula you can directly translate that to, to a particular code and once you are able to do that mo most of the things you can find it, most of the predictive values you can find it out. So yeah, if you have any question, please ask. Uh, otherwise, that will be the end of the session. Sir. Ah uh, yes. Sir, I have first done it sir. for the coaching. Anova. Yeah, we will talk about that. If anyone has any question right now with respect to the code that you are having, uh, please ask. Otherwise, the session has been ended, and I will just talk to Monish, and then we will wrap up the meeting. Yeah, Monish, you can share the screen. Oh, if you want, I can share the screen. I can, sh I can, we can just find it out on the net. I will share my screen. Okay. Yeah. So, what is sending that? Do we need one population, two population? More than two, more than two groups of the comparison. Means of more than two compare. Okay, any other mm, things? ANOVA population. All means are equal. For the assumption, sir. So ANOVA can be worked on two population as well. Is that what you found? Yes, sir. We are more independent group. At least three different groups are categories. Just a minute. Let me test. Mm. Okay, let me see. Anova, Anova. Anova can be used in two groups. I can see some YouTube videos here. I'm just sharing the links, some of those links. I need to maybe I need I need to read about that also. Mm. Also, I don't have a clear procedure population. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm sh sharing one link with you. Let's check that. So it, is, it says that it can be done with two or two more than two as well. But check that as well. Okay, minus. Yeah, sorry. I think. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, I think uh, my connection was lost in between. 
now can you hear me uh, yes sir sir uh, uh, actually the doubt uh, for this assignment question uh, also in the search video lecture is uh, in the slides are also you have that the analysis of variables uh -huh. are used to test for the quality of three or more population units i understand that mm. Okay, I, I will write a mail to professor to see that whether it can be done or not because according to internet analysis right now I can see that it can be done for two as well. Uh, but again, I will uh, write a mail to sir and some changes will be there. Maybe by next class I will let you know. So just there is a no option for three, so we are right there the two or more. Two or more. Uh, let me find some. other okay can it be done for two population two means okay okay in wikipedia also it's saying two or more but i will i will check with sir this thing Okay. Uh, any other question, Monish? You had earlier? No, sir. Okay. Okay. Only this. Okay. And, okay. The, and the population of equal means. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Population of equal means. How is saying for population of equal means? It's not a regular assumption. Because assumption is right. For the ANOVA, mm -hmm. there are only two assumptions. You are making the problem right. One is. Uh, Another hypothesis on this, and another is alternate hypothesis. Mm-hmm. Because it's a pretty good one. And there is a hypothesis not only as assumption there. Mm -hmm. That is hypothesis assumption about the population parameter. Mm hmm. Hypothesis just assumption means then another hypothesis and I alternate hypothesis and we using of both only your uh, Solving that, I know right. Hmm. How it can be? We are saying uh, how it is not an assumption. Population of equal means is an assumption, and population of not equal means also another assumption of I know right. Hmm. How it can be not a required assumption? How is not a required assumption? Assumption of I know. Without this assumption, we can't solve the problem right. Without uh, another person alternate. Can't solve it. I know a problem like this. Can't really. So, so based on my understanding, yeah, what you're saying is correct because first assumption is the sample populations it should be normally distributed. Then yeah. found out the means of those groups, two or more groups based on that. Yeah, but only thing I'm not able. I'm trying to correct whether they should be equal or not. Okay. They are only asking if, what is not a required assumption. Hmm. Then population of equal means is an assumption, and population of not equal means is also another assumption, right? Sir. And how it will not be an assumption for the ANOVA? The first basis of the test, any test, Z test, T test, or F test, or anything ANOVA. In ANOVA specifically, not for others. Okay. Anything we the first assumption is to solve the problem manually. We need that we take only the. We need to have mean. Yeah, null hypothesis. We take null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. Mm. Yeah, hypothesis means it is an assumption. Then we are taking population equal means that null hypothesis and population of not equal means alternate. Mm. Uh, no sir. Uh, I think the fourth option is the correct answer uh, because uh, populations have equal means uh, uh, not necessary that uh, we are testing the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so there may be equal or more, maybe not equal. Yeah, sir, correct. You are saying you are saying also that I am saying. So we cannot say that that is the assumption. We are taking null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Both are assumption only. We are not saying that this is 
um, without finding that, without concluding the answer, we are not saying which is correct, whether hypothesis, yes not is true or yes is true, right? No, but do ANOVA doesn't uh, also check this that whether suppose if means are not equal, then also it shows that if if yeah. it is unequal, then how much? So that means it is it's not going with the assumption. It is actually calculating first. So it is checking as a requirement that. Not as assumption, but actually, it's, it's, it is required that it has to calculate the means and check that whether they're equal or not. We can't take it as assumption. Yeah, it, yes, that's what I think uh, uh, Sujit sir is saying, trying to say. Yeah. Yes, yeah, hmm. So since we are calculating, so assumption is like we have to take it as a value. Like pi has certain value. That is the assumption that we are taking. But here, by default in the procedure of ANOVA. We are calculating the means, and mean can be equal. If it's not equal, then we have we are finding that how it, how with what extent it's not equal. Okay, you are correct, sir. But what is that mean is equal? We are taking null hypothesis that mean is equal. But we are calculating that, right? We are not assumption. Hmm, that's what that's what uh, the question is all about. Yes, yes. So we are calculating the that two assumption only, right, sir? No, I, if I have a two population, how can I assume that this mean are equal? Rather than, rather than I will go and first calculate it. I will not take it as u mu one is equal to mu two. I will not take that as a. I will calculate that. I will find that. Then based on that, the next set of procedure, uh, the procedure will come. Uh, suppose if the assumption is that uh, the populations have equal means, then there is no means to calculate the hypothesis uh, test. No. There is no any meaning to take the hypothesis test because there is an assumption that uh, equal means. So, uh, if uh, the uh, hy null hypothesis is alternative hypothesis, how also the uh, answer is that the the population has the equal means. Mm. So it, it is like this, right? We are ch checking since a sample. Again, we have to remember it's a it's a sample and. If the means are equal, it should not be done by the random, random effect. So that's why the whatever the what you're saying, it's I can understand that why we're coming from that. If all means are same and alternative hypotheses are different, then we should confirm that that it should not come from a random chance. It's not just just because we taken random samples coming from that. We have to prove that. There, that's why. Going to that, that is what my understanding is, but I don't know uh, how to explain this. Then, mm. mm -hmm. but as a problem only they are asking, okay? Uh, sorry, come again. To calculate ANOVA, mm -hmm. they are asking like, what are the what are the not the assumptions for calculating ANOVA? Uh, not assumptions of calculate, not a, not an assumption. Yes. Not a good assumption for ANOVA for calculating ANOVA. Mm -hmm. Then searches and users are for we we take them for calculating only. Sir. We are looking. See, we have a certain population. We have certain values for each and every population. There, we, we are not starting with the assumption that we have me equal means. We're just going and calculating the means there, and then we are checking that whether it has a equality or not. There we are. Uh, then we can make a. Uh, then we start making hypothesis testing based on that. You know, starting that we have the mean, then we start again calculating again do the process. Yes, yes we use, uh, exactly sir. But what is the hypothesis? F not and F two. What is that hypothesis mean? That only. Mm. Probably. After calculation only, we are saying that they are they are equal or not. Mm. On that, uh, calculate based on the calculation we say sir, but at the starting we take the both them as assumption. Yet not. See one way ANOVA test says that sir. what you are saying uh, is coming. Oh yeah. Sir, sir, uh, uh, he is saying that uh, when calculating, we are taking the assumption that is uh, the two population means are equal. Okay, but that is not an assumption. That is the procedure. That uh, mm -hmm. ANOVA procedure. So yeah. that first uh, you have to assume that this is the equal. Okay, so that is not the basic assumptions. The above three options are the basic assumptions of the ANOVA. 
we are class three three only so three are more so that means also at least two will be wrong also at least two population are under see two uh, if i search on internet two population also they are looking at it with search thing i will check that like if sir has okay, okay that that is something there see for one way anova test i have uh, in the internet if i am looking right now it tells that one way anova test uh, test whether the means of all groups are equal or different level of one factor so it test actually it's not under the assumption we are taking taking that's what it says it's not starting with that test actually and it is it know that it can have only two outputs there either it will have e, uh, same means or different mean and then it and then it goes towards to next uh, steps of uh, finding the uh, what with, with what factor they are uh, the means are different just like that that's what i am looking at right now in internet and finding this meaning Okay. Okay. Mm. I understand about, uh, from where you're coming from, but uh, Tamil Nadu. No, 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 not like that. I'm just using a phrase, not not like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. asking. <laughs> I'm starting with the question from uh, from where it's uh, highlighted. Uh, you can you can post that in forum discussion forum as well i think they they also have other ts which might be able to answer you much properly if i'm not able to clear this out okay sir so if there is a change in answer whether they will change or not they will continue this or not uh if the answer is cut then uh i think with the uh, this no considering the what i am looking at net i don't think so the answer is Wrong per se. What they are saying is correct. Okay. Then ANOVA can be used for two or more. 